The Malcolm Wilson stages saw the start of the 2016 Motorscope Northern Historic Rally Championship, and as well as the cars, some classic stages awaited the crews. Over the first couple of stages, it will be the early lead for Steve Bannister and Kim Gray. The first time in the car together and things were going well for the pair. Marcus and Helen Noble would be the closest rivals at this stage for Bannister, but the gap between them and the leader will be 54 seconds now. That would be a big ask to make up without any problems up ahead. They would have to watch out behind, however, with Charlie Taylor and Alan Ward taking third at this stage, but only six seconds back from Noble ahead. Phil and Caroline Jobson lie just outside the podium places after stage three. They would be 39 seconds off Taylor ahead, but they didn't have a big advantage in that position themselves. Jobson, in fact, would only have five seconds of an advantage in that fourth place, with Dave Forrest and Charlie Carter taking up fifth at this stage. Their position also meaning they lead the way in the H2 class. Their lead in that class and the overall results was from Mike Reed and Chris Sharp Simkis, second in the class and sixth on the leaderboard, with 18 seconds of a gap to Forrest. Rob Graham and Helen Harkness, meanwhile, lead the way in the H1 class at this stage. Seventh place overall, and with a 12-second lead in the class. And they would have a good margin in that place too, with Charlie Blaney and Adrian Wilford rounding out the results at this stage. So at the end of the morning loop of stages, the results are looking like this. On to the next couple of stages and there would be no change in the lead as Steve Bannister and Kim Gray continue to lead the way, now with a two minute advantage. There would though be change in second place. Charlie Taylor and Alan Ward step up to take that position, but only just. There was a single second between them and third place at this stage of the rally. And of course in that third place were Marcus and Helen Noble. They drop back a place on the overall results, but sadly, that would all change when they retire after the final stage in this loop. Phil and Caroline Jobson still remain the best of the rest outside the podium. 48 seconds the gap now, but they were gaining an advantage themselves in that position. And Dave Forrest and Charlie Carter would remain in fifth, the time slipping away from the crews ahead a little, but things were still going well for the pair. And in fact, there wouldn't be much change to those reaching the end of stage six. Mike Reed and Chris Sharp Simkis still remaining in sixth place at the end of this loop. And for Rob Graham and Helen Harkness, it would be seventh place still. The gaps ahead growing a little now, but they do still lead the way in the H1 class. Two more stages remaining then here, the results looking like this. On to the final stages then, and it will be seventh place for Charlie Blaney and Adrian Wilford, third in the H2 class. Rob Graham and Helen Harkness end the rally with sixth, the sole survivors in the H1 class, so victory, of course, was theirs. For Mike Reed and Chris Sharp Simkis, it will be second place in the H2 class at the finish of the rally, the pair ending the day with fifth place overall. And for Dave Forrest and Charlie Carter, it will be just outside the top three here at round one. Fourth place overall and taking that Class H2 victory. Onto those podium places then, and it will be third place for Phil and Caroline Jobson, finishing the day with a minute's gap either side of them. For Charlie Taylor and Alan Ward, it will be the runner-up position. Second place in the H3 class and overall this weekend for the pair. But taking victory after leading all day were Steve Bannister and Kim Gray. The gap extending to over two and a half minutes by the end of the rally. So at the end of round one at the Motorscope Northern Historic Rally Championship, the results look like this. Steve, Kim, fantastic result today and a battle as well all day. Yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't know how good Boyd Kershaw would be. Um, we knew Phil Burton would be quick up here, especially in Grisdale, because he knows Grisdale very well. Um, but yeah, and unfortunately he had a bit of an off on, on Matterdale or whatever. Yeah. But um, really pleased with how we've gone today, you know. Uh, told historic cars held up again, along with historic bloke. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly has. 
Kim, you are no stranger to how fast Boyd goes, so you must have been sat there thinking, yeah, this guy's got pace. Yeah, absolutely. I've not sat with Steve before, but you know, I know the sort of pace he's got, and yeah, I don't think he disappointed today for an old man. I don't think he's either. I think the banter's going to continue long past this interview. Well done, guys. Good result. Yeah, really good. You know, at first, probably at season, good to get a win. Yeah, definitely. Round two of the championship headed a little further north and to the Border Counties Rally. And the weather once again will be kind to the crews. It will be a different round, but the story will be the same. Steve Bannister and Kim Baker taking the early lead in the rally with a 38-second advantage at the midway point. Things will be different in second place at this round, though. Andy Kelly and Campbell Roy joining the championship and the battle at round two, putting in some good times to take that second spot. Things were going much the same here for Dave Forrest and Charlie Carter as they had at round one. They do, though, round out the podium at this stage with a minute and a half to Kelly up ahead. And for Alan McMoran and Albert Connolly, it would be a place just outside the podium. But the gap ahead would mean that was probably where they were likely to stay. So with a smaller entry at round two, the results in the championship at the halfway point look like this. Onto the afternoon stages then, and there would be no change to fourth. Alan McMoran and Albert Connolly end the rally with that position. Dave Forrest and Charlie Carter go one better than their round one result as they end the rally with the final step on the podium here at round two. Sadly for Andy Kelly and Campbell Roy, there was nothing they could do to gain time on the leaders. Second place will be theirs this weekend though, after a good fight with a good lead as well in that position. But making it two wins from two rounds will be Steve Bannister and Kim Baker. The times were good and the pair maintained the lead all day to take victory by the finish. Two rounds done then in the Motorscope Northern Historic Rally Championship and the results at the end of the second round look like this. Two left push on the front.